thesofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour There you go, it's Thursday night again, The day again. after Wednesday, the day yeah. before Friday yeah. Those of you that are joining us on video, on demand Welcome along after the event We're not going to continue the story and t chatting about chickens, are we? But if yeah. you were here for the pre-show You'll know all about it And apparently Darren goes fishing for chickens Is it chickens? Or is it cod? Yeah, no, cod. 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 From a garden centre. From a cod from a garden. There was no cod. I'm there was no cod. Up just right. Right. Check. It's worth, you know. worth looking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hello, my name's Dave and I'm a vapor. Apparently, so are these two. <laughs> Welcome along to the show. This is the Here's Hour on Thursday night, as ever was on the is it? Thursday oh, the 23rd yeah. of May, the day after Thomas Bear's birthday and the day before Keith's, because Keith is 52 tomorrow, aren't you? Had yes. a hard, he had the hardest paper out of the whole of Sutherland. <laughs> so he did. And Darren's is on the 9th of July, if anybody needs to know. 9th of July, Darren's a week after mine. Mine's on the 2nd of July. And I, if the case is going to be 52, I'm going to be 31. Quite. Something along those lines. And this, this dear viewer, is going to be a mishmash of a show which we laughingly call, on 3, 103, The, the Here's Hour. hour. Yes, indeed, the his hour is what it is. Keith has just complained yet again about the title music. He would like some Mozart, but we can't do Mozart. Well, I just meant something soothing. He wants some, something, be something soothing. Some, yeah. some Wagner. Relaxing. Well. Da, 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 da. <laughs> that stuff. Oh, what was that music they used to use when they advertised Hamlet cigars? Air on a J-string. Yeah, I like that. I can open yes. a window. Do you remember that? I do. I did a piece on it yes. ages ago. Used air on a G-string. Yes. But I played the air on a G-string myself, so there I was no copyright that. in yes. those. And what sort of instrument? An iPad. You can do all kinds with an iPad. All right. Oh, yes. Except, except reprogram an EVIC or a Janty Mid. I should say, in the interest of fairness and stuff like that, there's new firmware. Firm, firmware? Firmware. Firmware. I've gone all Hartley Pool. And what have I've you? only been here half an hour. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> um, there's new firmware available for the Janty Mid, in all fairness. There is new firmware available for the Janty Mid. I haven't installed it. I'm not going to. But I just thought I would say, so people know, there is new firmware. I don't know anybody that's bought one. Has anybody in chat bought a Janty Mid? Uh, Marky Mark. I'm but looking. Where are we? Marky Mark, no. are you in the room? No, there's nobody, nobody coming forward saying that they've... Uh, they bought one. No. No. Look at that. Look at that. They're talking about the knees up. The knees up. The knees up in That's chat. I don't normally do things like this this early, but if they're talking about the knees up, you need to know about the knees up. Are you going to the knees up? 29th of June. Put it in right, your diary. Oh, now, actually, yes, we must after the last time. 29th of June. Next month. Next month. Not the month. 29th after. of June. 29th of June. 29th of June. <coughs> this will tell you all about it. We'll Watch. <laughs> yeah, David's not doing very well tonight. That didn't start where I thought it was going to start. So I'm going to make sure it starts where it's supposed to start and then play it in again. This is David being a complete numpty. I've got a very good reason why, of course. I've spent the last two days 
reading through all the amendments, but we'll talk about that after. The knees will be much more fun than the 29th of May. Yeah, have a look. It's going to be good. Give him an injection. Yeah. <laughs> the knees, mate, you're going to be there, 29th of June. Say you'll go, say you'll go, Look say you'll go. Go on, say you'll go, I say you'll go. I have a feeling I might be in Spain. Spain? Yeah. Can you not commute for the day? I could try. <laughs> Just flap your about, arms. Uh, Yes, and fly. Uh, yeah. Spread your wings, my darlings. Flat them, mate. Right. I'll, I'll remember. We'll tell 20. you every week leading up. We'll tell yeah, you every right, week leading up. Because I forgot, didn't I? I got mm. the month wrong. Who have you time. booked your holiday with? I haven't booked it yet. Oh, good. I'll ring them up and cancel before you do. All right. Because <laughs> everybody wants you there. Yes, I do. Everybody wants you there. Yeah, right. Now, the question has just been asked from Russell Webster. WTF, why the face is DD on today? Why the face is DD on today? That cannot be right. Oh, I've got it now. Listen, this is a reaction to having read 1,360 amendments to the Tobacco Products Directive. I've read them all, and my head is going round and round in strange circles. And I, I, I'm probably no near to, nearer to analysing it than I was last night. However, are you aware? We, we, have a we had a conversation before we came on air yes. out in, in what I laughingly call the green room, which is otherwise known as the kitchen. And Keith was asking about what's going on with tobacco products directly, were you not? Yes. Because... The latest. Yes, the yeah. latest. Because you, you technophobe, as we know. Yes. You don't do computers and things much. That's right. So, of course, when it comes to watching the shows the other nights of the week... It's not easy. I'll have, to, I'll have to put it on your telly for you. Daz knows how. We'll send him around. He'll wave put his arms and it'll work. Put it on the big telly. So, so you don't know what's going on, really. I don't. And the thing about it is, what occurred to us, Keith is probably closer to what's happening than I would think 95% of people that are out there. Yes, that's what we were saying. Yes. I mean, it, it's, no, it's no major secret. Great friend of mine, Keith... One of me, well, me best mate. Yeah, that's nice to know. Oh, it's it? true, yes, it's true, it. best mate. Um, but he, to me, you were the man in the street. Yes. He's not like a super hobby vapor, are you? No. Don't wind your own wicks and stuff like that. No. And, and <laughs> doesn't kind of go on forums or on the internet or any of that? No. No. And yet, even though he's, in, he's informed by being on this show and living next door to me, still not right up to speed with what's going on. That's right. Now, it's concerning me is this, and I want to make an appeal to all of the vendors out there, and we've got no time flat to do this. You've all got mailing lists, all of them, all of the vendors. Every vendor out there has a mailing list. Please, 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 tonight, can you email something out to all of the people that buy from you and have bought from you over the last four years, asking them please to contact their MEP and for the moment at least, ask their MEP to support the amendments put forward by Rebecca Taylor 
Chris Davis, Christian Engstrom and um, Mr Fjellner. Those four, those are the ones that I think we should be supporting for the simple reason that they protect ASIGs. Every vendor please in the country do this because there's so many people out there haven't got a clue what's going on. As far as they're aware, Carla Bruni <coughs> is using one on Jonathan Ross, but they don't know that there's a problem. They know that, that, that some schools have banned them, as we showed last night on the show, um, but they don't know there's a problem in the EU. And, and that's about the size of it, isn't it? Yeah. I oh. mean, we were saying we're with 750,000 vapors statistically, and we cover the majority of what's going on in the EU and given with our viewer ratings, the percentage is really that big at all if it was based on 750,000 in the UK alone and there's 5 million in, oh, in oh, Europe. Oh, has it? anybody got a friend, an acquaintance, a relative who's a journalist? You know, it would make a good campaigning article, mm. particularly in one of the tabloids. We've, we've, been, <coughs> we've been contacting journalists left, right and centre. We've been getting hold of them left, right and centre. Nobody's picking it up. And yet the stupid part about it is, yesterday, all this furore about olive oil in bowls and bottles got kicked, up, got kicked up a little bit on Twitter. I don't think it even trended on Twitter. And today, they've done a U-turn on it. Well, you see, you've got, you've got some of the tabloids who are anti-EU. And I would have thought this would have been, you know, honey to them to get an article um, slagging off because that's all it would amount to, wouldn't it? Indeed. Um, Daz, I'm going to ask you to do us a favour. Go to the, the mixer, if you can get there, please. And yep. just turn channels two and three all the way up. Thank you. I'd spied oh. it in chat. Thanks, Chris. That's the good thing about having chat open. Two and three. Through and two Top, and three. middle or bottom? Bottom. All the way up. Keith, can you talk? Is that to the left or the right? All the way to the right. Hello. Go on. Hello. Keith, go on. Hello. That's right, them both up. Is that better now? Can chat tell us? Can you hear Keith? Be just as well if they can't. Is it? Hang on. I'll replace it. How's that? That that will probably do the job. We we'll hope. Yes. Um, in 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 terms of amendments, people in chat are now asking: Are there any numbers? Um, what what affects us? all sorts of things and there are amendments there from i'll call them friendly amendments if you like they're meant to be friendly but there's unintended consequences of them um, for instance frederick rees who is in the aldi group who's the leader of the aldi group and the shadow rapporteur tabled an amendment that basically said under no circumstances can e-cigs be considered medical devices and everybody goes, that's great. They're not medical yeah. devices, that's mm. brilliant. But what she's done, is said, they have to be considered as tobacco products under the Tobacco Products Directive. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, if that goes through, and none of the other amendments that she's tabled or Rebecca's tabled or any of the others have tabled that, are, that work for us, and they become tobacco products under the Tobacco Products Directive, then all of the other features of the Tobacco Products Directive that would apply to cigarettes and everything else will also apply to e-cigs, which would mean that they've got to be 84 millimetres long, they can be no wider than, I think it's eight and a, eight and a half millimetres, they, they would have to be in plain packaging, they'd have to be out of sight, and more to the point, and this is the important point, because there are so many amendments there where they're trying to ban internet sales of tobacco products, not just cross-border, but all internet sales, but I can't get my head round the basic of that. Uh, it's not a tobacco product. But it, it doesn't matter what it is, it's what they consider it to be. It's what the MEPs consider it to be, what they decide it is. Okay. That's what it is. Common sense goes out the window here, Keith. Well, there's no answer to that, is there? Well, you know that if a group of so-called intelligent people are classing something as a tobacco product that has no tobacco in it, it doesn't just defy common sense, does it? It goes beyond that. Well, absolutely. I mean, you, you, it's like <coughs> saying that Coca-Cola is a coffee product. Yes. And it's it's got caffeine in it. So what? Big deal. It could be. It could come from coffee. It could come from. It could be. Um, you know, whiskey has no alcohol in it. Yes. 
all of that sort of thing. So yes, they, what they've said is that nicotine comes from tobacco leaves, therefore it's a tobacco product. That's what one of the amendments actually says. So they want them treated as tobacco products. And if it's treated as tobacco products, there's no internet sales, there's all kinds. And this, this start, yes, Disco Des Wilkinson says, so an aubergine is tobacco. Yes, it doesn't make any sense. If it's got nicotine in it, it's a tobacco product. As far as some of these people are concerned, we're talking about folks that are incapable, it would seem, of understanding basic logic. And it's Big Craig summed it up. And if you're not watching live, I'm not going to read what he said because I would have to give it away. It's but calling it's, them basically custody. <coughs> yes, they are custoding custard holes. That's what they are, custoding yes. custard holes. And I will say, however, and I, I want to say this, I tweeted it earlier on, but I do want to say it live on screen. Glenis Wilmot is the leader of the Labour lot in Brussels. She's like the big boss of all the Labour lot in Brussels. And she has tabled amendments that says they have to be medicinal and they are only for cessation purposes. They're not for anything else. That's what she wants. She just wants people to pack in. She's tabled that. She has no notion, no acceptance of harm reduction in any way, shape or form. <coughs> but Linda McCavan, who is an underling, if you like, to Glenis Wilmot. Glenis Wilmot's the boss. Linda is, is down the ladder from her quite away. Um, has tabled amendments that says there <coughs> should not be medicinal products. And she is beginning to embrace tobacco harm reduction. And I just publicly want to say thank you linda for coming this far please talk to me and let's see if we can go a little bit further i think you've done a grand job you've come it's a big step because quite honestly i'm not sure i would want to cross wilmot um but would you no i wouldn't want to cross her i've no, seen her face i wouldn't want to cross her i reckon she's crossed her and yeah. you've, you've got to give her a big thumbs up for oh, doing that and let's hope that she comes a little bit further along the way um, yes I know she wants a ban on flavours but she's come part of the way she's come part of the it, way but Would, then again Rebecca Taylor did at one point uh, absolutely I mean so at, at, at one point Rebecca Taylor was uh, she was in the in the in the Bandon camp wasn't she she was in in I mean if if, if Linda McAvan's going down the same route <coughs> as Rebecca Taylor because even though Rebecca Taylor I remember it wasn't that long ago she was 75 percent of the way there apart from flavours mm -hmm. And if if that's the same thing direction that Linda's going, then yeah, I take my hat off to her. Absolutely, definitely, hundred percent. Because um, you know, I'm, we're seeing like more and more of, them, of these MEPs wising up, and it's it's really good to see. But obviously, I know that we're not we're not there yet, but we're making really good progress. You know, they say that people nowadays are switched off from mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. and when I'm talking about politics I'm talking about your local councillor your local MP so if they switched off to politics here how remote are these people well, from it, the reality interestingly uh, enough I've, I mean <coughs> I know pol there's like I don't want to go the, obviously down the whole political route but I wouldn't have said I was as heavily in with anything to do with MEPs or MPs or Brussels or anything until this came in and it's it's been really interesting as well you know like if that if anything that you wanted to address that you that I would now know what to do you know kind of thing and I just I just hope that more people would would look to do the same as what those who are already doing it you know take the same stance. Yeah, I'm sorry to be pessimistic, but I don't think they will. Mm. I honestly don't think they will. Unfortunately, I, I'm, I must admit, having ploughed through all of these amendments, my feeling is that unless we act quickly and loudly and volubly and visibly, if we do not act now, we will lose. I'm, I'm as sure as I can be of that. There are so many amendments that are taken individually and you look at them and you think, that's great for us, that's great for us, that's great for us. Mm. Ian Coombs has been tweeting a lot of these good amendments for us. Mm. The problem with it is, is when you look at them, there's so many more that are anything but great for you us. You know, talking about publicity, has anything about this been fed through to you, Kip, for example? Um, yes, it has. 
and and Godfrey Bloom seems to be taking a reasonable stance on it but there is another MEP who wrote a very very grotty letter back to somebody on Twitter um, I'm not going to name who it is because that would identify the MEP and I'm, and I'm not going to identify the MEP either but he's a UKIP MEP and he was bloody snotty really? honestly M went along the lines more or less of who the hell do you think you are to tell me what I should be doing and I thought poor man that's the kind of response you don't want to be getting I mean he'll oppose it but ah, I wouldn't go down that road myself I've got to be honest it was uh, a hard thought you know UKIP were going to be sensible about things but I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Uh, I think Russell Webster in chat has, he's kind of summing it up. It's very uneven ground on there, I have to say. It is. It's very uneven. It is. Definitely. Right, Jill CB has asked the question, who makes the final decision as to what amendments will be used? Um, here's how it works. The amendments are all discussed and they're discussing them next Wednesday and Thursday. It's item 16 on the agenda. And one assumes that they'll start at one and work their way right the way through to 1360. And they'll talk them through. The Sorry, when you say their work, do you mean the whole of the... The committee. The, the, the committee. committee. The right. committee decides all of this. And then they'll go through and they'll, they'll discuss all of the amendments. And obviously the people that are proposing the amendments will speak for them and try to persuade other folks that that's the amendment you should vote for. Yeah. Right? Now that's going to take some time. When they've been through all and discussed them all and they've made the pros and the cons and they've all said their piece, then it goes to the vote. And if, if you were watching the last one, it literally, it does go um, all in favour, against, abstentions, <coughs> rejected. It's as quick as that. It's a show of hands. And it's in favour, against, abstentions, rejected or carried or whatever it happens to be. And the last time we were sitting watching this, they went through God knows how many. Oh, there it is. That was the response. Yes, there's a few of them had it. I do not need you or anyone else to tell me of my responsibilities as an MAP. In fact, the tone of your request is such as possibly to drive away support from the only UK party which is likely to really help. How can I give a personal reply when I receive six other identical emails in the same day? I am aware of your complaint. You are not the first to contact me or my colleagues of UKIP who are opposed to EU interference. We are working to get us out of the EU so that issues like this can be dealt with by, and then there's more to come. That's the tenor of the reply I that think came that's from a this year. It's response. disgusting. And there's a few people have had that reply. Thanks for posting it up, my dog. Um, you know, it's, yeah. So back to where we were, right? They go through all of this, and obviously they've got to talk them all through, but they'll vote them, all 13, 60 of them, they'll vote them all through in three hours. Mm. And it's a case of amendment number <coughs> one, all in favour, against, abstentions, rejected or carried, whichever way it goes. And we're going to need, we'll need to watch it carefully to see how it all goes. When that all happens, then Linda McCavan will sit down and she'll, or the commission will sit down and they'll rewrite the whole proposal with all of these amendments in. Then that gets voted on and passed or not. Then it goes to the plenary session, to the whole of the EU Parliament. Then they discuss it and it gets passed or it gets sent back for more amendments, fingers crossed. And then it goes, once, once they're finished with it, then it goes to the Council of Ministers. And when the Council of Ministers are happy with it, because they can send it back to the Parliament. So once he, the, the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers agree, <coughs> then it goes into action. That's the way it works. You see, the frightening thing is no matter which way it goes, there's nothing you can do about it. That's how it works. But the, but there is, we can, we can try to influence it and we should. And it, well. is, it is working as well because, you know, like I said before, with the likes of, I mean, I know Rebecca Taylor's just one person in general, but from going right from the beginning where some MEPs are standing up and going, mm, I'm not really that sure, to then all of a sudden we're seeing the likes of Chris Davis stand up and say, you know, what you're doing is wrong. Leave them alone. They're, well, you know, they're, they're doing no harm to anybody. And it's, it is making a, an impression. It is definitely making an impression. But obviously we've still got a, a, a good fight yet. 
you know, to... Oh, it's by no means over. It's yeah. by no means over. But don't, don't think that we're not having an effect because we definitely are. Yeah. My, but the contacts I've got in Brussels are telling me we are definitely having an effect. And you've just got to look at Rebecca Taylor for proof of yeah. that. You've just got to look, really, you have at Linda McCaffrey, yeah. who's changed our tune. And that, that wasn't as a result of the meeting on the 7th. I mean, if you look at that, probably it might be a good idea one, one time just to do a comparison and go back through your archives and get the original f footage with Linda uh -huh. and, and what, what her last footage was, just to compare the two, um, because she was very, very against it at the beginning. Very much so. When, I, well, I, I remember what she said. These mm -hmm. are definitely medicines. Mm -hmm. These have to be medicines. They are for quitting and stuff like that. Yeah. I think, I'm sorry, my blood's starting to boil a little <laughs> bit, and I think one or two people in chat might be getting it. Oh, here we go. We've got the rest of the letter. Thanks, Mad Dog. Your own Westminster MPs, right, to be dealt with by your own mess. But I see you made the mistake of sending your message to a wide range of UK MEPs, many of whom are not receptive to your case. In fact, we, UKIP MEPs, had a visit from representatives of tobacco companies only yesterday. I've been in contact with major tobacco firms over the last few months and have received their representatives at my Northampton office. If you need a slightly more personal response from me, contact my office as per CC above in a somewhat more friendly manner. We'll take the adverts. Back in two minutes. Safer6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Out. We are back in the room here on Thursday the 23rd of May 2013. Yes, you talked about the mail. Well, uh, I was just quoting the mail as an example. Uh, I mean, everyone that writes articles in the mail doesn't necessarily reflect the policy of the mail or any other paper for that matter. Well, we've never seen them be supportive of E6. In fact, they keep slagging them off with some of the, the, the worst journalism I've ever seen. So as as you know, we couldn't go there. We've been we've been trying all over the place. And as soon as we get it, we'll, there's a there's a large proportion that goes straight to the um, the PCC, is it? Yes. Yeah. Press Without press it. complaints commission. Which we've done before. Because it, it's just so bad. Anyway, look, I tell you what, let's leave that for the time being because I'm sure it's going to get covered again on Sunday. Sure but before we talk about anything else, I want to just let everybody know that Sutton on sa on Saturday. Mm. Smoked of it on Saturday has gone into hiatus for a little while. Andy is up to his eyeballs with the Smoke Without Fire campaign, and he needs to be. We need to be getting all of this footage out, the good stuff, going out as quickly as we possibly can at the highest possible quality. So he's going to be concentrating on that for the next few weeks. 
to get this footage coming out. I know he's got interviews set up today, he's filming on Saturday, he's got interviews set up tomorrow, there's Brussels, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And we, we just came to the conclusion that his amazing talents would be better used getting all this stuff out to help us fight the corner. So I hope that everybody will support us with that. Um, it's the uh, We think it's the best policy to get this stuff out there, get it going as quickly as we can, use the money that has been raised and it finishes on Sunday, the Kickstarter appeal finishes on Sunday. Let's, let's get it out there, let's get Andy filming all of this stuff, editing all of this stuff and making it available and let's try and get it on mainstream telly. So something on Saturday, for the time being, no regular show, but there may be off the cuff shows, as and when he's got stuff to share, then there'll be something scheduled, but we will let you know on other shows during the course of the week. Um, he's putting his heart and soul into this. The man is a legend. He is putting his heart and soul into this, and if you've, if you've seen the footage he's already come out with that's been professionally shot, it is absolutely amazing, and we know other MAPs are looking at it because there's ways and means of telling it. That man, Andy Sutton, is a legend. Please give him your support. Big round of applause in chat for Andy Sutton and one in here as well, because he's, he's smoke without fire campaign. We're well up for that. Right. Shall we look at something AC related? Yeah. <laughs> Aside from the EU. Do you want, should we do something technical, Keith? Uh, yes, yes, by all means. Uh, do you, this want to is, uh, do you uh, might want to change your glasses, or are you okay? No, no, no. You don't no, need a close-up uh, view? Uh, no, no, uh, I'll manage with these glasses, thanks. Well, I'm going to go to close up you can for this one, because it's it's interesting, is this? close up you can comes up, and we go to it there. And what I'm talking about isn't Midingo, and it isn't the RSST, it's this little <coughs> unit that I've got under it, which I shall take off my little stand, and screw it onto me hive. This is it. And as you can see, he said, holding it in the right place, it's called a Zorbas. Right. Right. right? So that's more than one Zorba, really. Right. Great. And it's Greek. It is Greek. Oh, oh, right. oh I guess. Right. It is Greek. And what it is, is a wattage multiplier. And it's very, very simple. 510 connector on that end to screw into your device, which I should do right now. There you go. Mm -hmm. And look, look, look at that. Look how that sits. Sits really well. Sits really rather nicely. And then you plug in, you screw in, your atomanubrilator, whatever your atomanubrilator might be. And basically, then you press the button and vape. I'll go back there, none closer we can for the time being. Mm. And it, it is a wattage multiplier, right? right? So, great, works, watch. Oh, it's got a little light on it. Mm. It has little lights on it. Let's go back and show you what the little light does. Now, this little LED there, when you press the button, lights up. Daz, tell me what colour that is, please. That is ye yellow. Orange, like yellow, 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 orange, yellow, and you, you can see it's that's. <laughs> it's happened. To, you press its button and look, the white stuff come out the end. <laughs> there you go. Now, but if you press the button three times, watch what happens. One, two, three, and hold it. It flashes multicolours, and then you get four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. 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 Now that tells you, it confirms it's set at 8 watts. Right. But if I do that again and hold it down, was that green? Yes. Right. One, two, three. Orange? Yeah. Right. One, two, three. I've got to get the timing right. One, two, three. No. One, two, three. There we go. Oh, yes. All right. So that's green flashes to mm -hmm. tell me what it's at. Now I'm going to set this to 18 watts. One, two, three. <gasps> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That's it. Right. It is now set to eighteen watts. Do you want to go, Daz? <laughs> <laughs> or shall I? I think you should. I'll do it. But before I do, I'm going to drip some juice onto me coil. Otherwise, It'll burn like buggery. I tried this earlier. 18, 18 watts. And you'll see the little light come. I'll have to pull it upside down so you see the little light come on. 
take me well you take me with yeah. yeah right flashing oh god that's hot now back to close you up you can for this bit because it's telling me that there's not enough juice in that battery is that why it was flashing yes so i need to oh, set it to right. something left there's not enough juice left in the battery mm -hmm. to take it up to 18 watts so let's do it again one two three and i'll set it to something more sensible this time there'll be 18 flashes before we go it's a bit of a clot is this to some degree mm -hmm. but it's much easier than a certain other device yeah one two mm. three four five six seven eight nine ten will do ten, yeah. take your finger off right back to non close you up you come and we'll give it a blast now uh-huh so it's like green is okay it's orange when it's working if there's an issue it'll go green and what what that's basically telling me is that battery is buggered right so what i'll do <coughs> is take it off the dingo and stick it onto something that i put a fresh battery in and this is a natural and there are no issues with threading on this i'm here to tell you it's a good mod the natural it's a nice one and here we go again let's get it running helps if it connects what have we here don't tell me i haven't taken the battery out of the blue thing that's it. Yep, yeah, we're on. Have a blast at that. There you mm. go. Mm. Isn't that uh, rather powerful? That's that's the most powerful vape I've ever had. Do you want a blast? That is the most yeah. powerful vape I've ever had. And that's set at 10 watts. I mean, I know you set it to 18 just for the sake of setting it to 18, but yeah. what is the maximum we can do on it? 18. 18. Yes. 18 watts. Now, I, 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 somewhere I've got some triple coil atomizers. Oh, look at that vapor. Good grief. Visible vapor coming out of Keith. <laughs> oh, we've got it. We've got to go ah. and Keithy can for that. I've never seen as much vapor coming out of him. Mm. You know how we always said that Dave brings up loads of vapor? Yes. Uh, definitely with something like that. He's enjoying that. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Now, very you say I would, present. I would now say definitely, without hesitation with that, I would quite happily get that in a mechanical mod in Vape in My Heart's content. <clears throat> that, that's much simpler than that other. Um, I can't remember its name. What, the Evic? Yes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That's an interesting... I, I, I'm I, not 100% sure that I agree with that because I find the EVIC very easy to use. But once you know where you want it... I mean, with me kicks, me kicks are all set to 8 watts. Yeah. Because all me mechanical mods that have got kicks in. This... Now, oh, there's, there's another thing I forgot to show you. This is clever as this. You know how some mechanical mods kind of... It's difficult to switch them off? Yes. Right. It's on. Mm -hmm. You just carry on screwing it in. And can you see that there's a little gap appearing there? Yeah. Try and get it there. You just see a little gap. And mm -hmm. press the button. And look. It's off. It's, it's off. switched it off. So you've got an on-off switch on it. On. And off. How's that? That's... So are they new to the market? Yeah. Brand new to the market. Um, I just got a look at them when I did the um, the vape team show, and it was arranged to send me one across. Now I'm going to do the full the full bifter with all of the meters mm -hmm. and oscilloscopes and everything else. I would have done it for today, but I've been somewhat somewhat busy with the evening. reading. Yeah. Yes, reading all 1,360 pig and amendments. Fed up with reading them, I am. But that is rather pleasant. Yes, it yeah, is. And, and I'll, I'll just I'll whip it off and, and, and show it again, just so people can see what it looks like. Serial number on this is 179. Um, 
and it size wise it's it's grand i think that's that is is gorgeous look at it yeah and it fits so well on anything you want to put it on mm -hmm. um i'm yet to try it with a triple coil cartomizer i'm going to do that mm. um and, and pretty good and yes moonlit i am going to do the whole thing it's uh, it's all going to get put on the oscilloscope it's going to get mated out and and everything how it works um it's corking i'm i'm really rather pleased with it dead easy to use dead hard. you you get away with one of those keith easy yes even me even that you. would that would make a, a mechanical appeal to me something like that definitely i think from the point of view of if you use um steel wicks mm. um, whether they rope or mesh or whatever in fact anything where you're making your own coil you don't have to be quite as precise yeah absolutely you, know? you can uh, you can just knock it to to do whatever now you haven't forgotten have you what you're doing next week no <laughs> just remind everybody i am re-wicking and coiling the uh Arga t and seeing how quick i can do it in. live live the question's just been asked by Vaporman, does it work better than the Kick DD? Right, I should, I, I, I've got to put my cards on the table here. I very, very rarely go above 10 watts these days. So if it does 10 watts reliably, I'm happy, and the Kick does, pretty much. It, it stays where I'm at, because I'm usually at eight, eight and a half, nine, around that area. And with this I have been, I've taken it up to 15 watts, and it holds 15 watts on a freshly charged battery without any bother at all. But as the as the, the voltage goes down in the battery, it does drop off a little bit. It'll tell you that it can't keep it going. The other thing is, and this is, it, I don't know whether it's clever or not, and it just depends on how you look at it. If you've got a freshly charged battery and you're trying to use this at six watts, it won't go there unless you're using a three ohm or above or a three and a half ohm coil because the voltage in the battery it just passes it through, yeah. mm -hmm. right um it, it'll only boost it won't cut yeah so you need to be aware of that but other than that yes yeah, so far it's doing really well like i say it arrived over the weekend while i was away celebrating the four birthdays and uh, imbibing a really rather pleasant beer if i can get some of that i'm bringing it home you'd love it all right oh betty's blonde betty's blonde, betty's blonde. Gorgeous pale ale. I only had twelve pints of it, and followed Surely it up with a, I, only twelve pints, and followed it up with a Morgan Spice and Diet Coke, and it was the Diet Coke that did it. <laughs> like oh, pale the backside. We'll take a quick break, <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about e-cigarette stuff. It'll be good, won't it? Because mm -hmm. well, he's got some new juice for you. He has. He has. We might even try it. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.
And we're back in the room, you caught me just as I was clearing an EVOD out. Yes. Yes. Uh, I had toyed with the idea of wicking up the uh, AGI, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But uh, no, I've cleared the EVOD out, so where's this? There it is. There it is, there. What, so what juice is this, does? Raspberry and coconut. At what strength? 18 milligrams. 18 milligrams strength, raspberry and coconut. Oh, it's runny. Yeah, it's uh, PG heavy. Right, that's in there. I should have done that on close you up, we can. I'll go up close you up, we can and do it. Um, close you up, we can. Auto, there we go. Close it. Look at the state of this. What a mess we've got. Right, I shall, I shall screw back in. So this is Daz's homemade juice. That's freshly made. Um, unsteeped. For me. Unsteeped. Unsteeped. Yeah. And now, here's the thing. I've, I've left all my cloths out in the other room. So, shirt tails. You can. Shirt tails, that's what you use to tighten these things up. Because Keith came in tonight and he says, Yevon's leaking! Well, he didn't say it like that, he said, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't tightened it. Well, that, that could only be me, couldn't it? It wasn't tight enough, no. Uh, no. no too strong for light work, that's your yes. trouble. Without a shadow of a doubt. So there you go. I'll just give that a second. It'll take three or four drags for the flavour to drop out, I suppose. I'm going to have a lift. Sniff. <laughs> what is it? Uh, raspberry and coconut. Why does it smell of custard? It shouldn't do. You have a sniff of that? It does. Smell it's probably because it's been in the box with something with custard in. That's just the smell coming off the bottle, but there'd be no custard and that apple in there prior. Oh no, that's the raspberries coming through mm -hmm. loud and clear there. Mm. You've been on the sprouts, have you? Mm. In, in, interestingly enough, it was the same because what I. There's a. There's a uh, flavour by Raw called Serenity, which me and Sav love. We absolutely love it. But it's hard to get a hold of now here. And that is raspberry and coconut. But it's yeah. always heavy on it, it's always more heavy on the raspberry and lighter on the coconut. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try that, Dave? I'll uh, I'll pass it across to Daz. Well, hey, Daz. He knows. I know, but I'm doing something yeah. else. This is this is this live stuff going on. Yeah, it's definitely more on the raspberry. But the more it steeps, the more the flavour changes. The only thing I would say is, don't make it a regular vape because it will lose flavour quickly. Right. Yeah, it does lose flavour. Right. Flavor just quickly. use that sort of periodic. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Because yeah, it, it it will just become uh, flavourless. Periodically is that like once a month? <laughs> Maybe once you know once <clears throat> twice a week. Right, and oh then God. and then go back to your stable. It's pleasant, that. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers, is it? You can see what I'm doing, can't you? I can see you, you see, doing. You see, all the time yeah, I've been using okay. this. The button location is is mm. still difficult to to find. Mm. Is it? Mm. See, I've not had that issue at all. I'm, I'm juggling here. Yes, that's... Do you want to know what I'm doing? Well, it looks yes, to me like you're doing you do a re-wicking. I'm going to re-wick. This is the uh, AGI version 2, and it's different from the AGI version 1. You'll see I'm screwing the grub screw in, but you'll see when it stops. Whoops, that wasn't it stopping. Keep on going, and finally it decides that it's just not going to go any further. There you are, it's stopped there now. You can see there's, there's the pressure where it's stopped. And as you can see, the grub screw is inset. It's reset into it. Mm -hmm. I'll put the other one in and I'll make a, a coil and we'll try it on the, uh, the the silica wick. So, yes, just this is the change that's been made to the version two of the AGI, which is now available from safersigs.co.uk and I'm all fingers and thumbs, as per ever was. Yes. What's chat saying? The higher than the... Now, Stuart, Coo Stuart Cooper says, this is the part where he says it, the V2 doesn't leak in drip mode, and he says it does. I'm going to say nothing of the such which, because I haven't tried it yet. This is live. Very, very live, and I've lost that grub screw. Um, no, I haven't. It's there. Uh, so I'm not going to say anything, I'm going to try it first. And apparently it helps if you don't try screwing the grub screw into the one that's already got a grub screw in it. 
Ahem. It's the glasses, David. It's what it is, yes. I'm, I'm doing this at arm's length and we're probably going to run out of time because there's only 10 minutes left. Less than. I so, did something like that, something tough like that the other week with a BIM and I can't remember what I did. I'll tell you what, what we'll do. Right. The what? Look, there you go. You can see that the two group screws are in and you can't see through. Mm -hmm. So your, your liquid's as thin as a thin thing. Yeah. So rather than going through the whole malarkey of wicking it up, I'm just going to drop some juice in and make sure it hits the holes. And we'll be able to see. Right, that's it, full. And we'll be able to see if any juice drips through. We'll just leave that there, hold there, and see if any juice drips through. That's what we'll do. Yep. I should have put it on a little doodah. I can't but see any drops here. I'm not seeing any drops. I'm gonna, I've got some on my finger, which is a bit of a, but I'm not seeing any drops coming through. So apparently, right, we'll just put it there. Apparently it's safe, it's safe to, well, it's not safe to say it, but apparently they're, they're not supposed to link, uh, leak. There is a little ridge on them. And again, I'll, I'm gonna put it through its paces for next week. Oh, and check it all out. There, it, it only arrived yesterday, and between yesterday and today, like I say, I've been uh, doing lots and lots of other things. So I'll try the silica wick thing for next week. Uh, <laughs> what was that? That, here? that was totally unexpected. <laughs> Pardon me. That's, that's shocking. Can I have a plaster that now? You can, yes. Raspberry and coconut. Raspberry and coconut. And and the raspberry flavour is the one that's. It's coming out, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can see you well enough. <laughs> Pleasant, isn't it? Need a nose hit. It's biscuity. 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 Is that not just because it's our custard and briar? Mm. It shouldn't be biscuity. Well, I, I didn't sense it was biscuity mm. at all. I'm definitely getting raspberry. Yeah. Yes. I'm definitely getting the raspberry. Bored. Definitely overcomes the, uh, the coconut. The coconut. Mm. Yes. But believe it or not, it's coconut ice. What's in there? I know. <laughs> Pleasant, isn't it? Thankfully, what? <laughs> it's not too high on the menthol. Yeah, the bit, it, I did right. actually make it deliberately like that because when I did it, I did it on the age use calculator, and it says to add three ml of flavouring, which would have been like normally one and a half and one and a half of each. Right. But what I did was I put one ml of coconut and two ml of raspberry. <sighs> You've seen what right. Jeff Benyon's put in chat, haven't you? How does it do at 18 what? Oh, 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 Jeff Benyon, I used to like you. What's he going to do here? I'm going to stick it at 18 watts and see what happens. I'm going to stick it on the uh, right. Zorbath. 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 Stick it on the Zorbath. <sighs> I don't know. The things I do to keep our viewers happy. I shall put the convert or condubre later on because it's a yes. an Avod. <sighs> you weren't around when I did the first Pravari thing, were you? No. And oh, I went up. It right yes, put it on there like that. Oh dear. We'll start it at uh, 10 watts. Oh, oh you bugger. Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, go. I want to go. 10 watts. I oh, my God! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Takes it to a whole new level, that. Certainly does. Um, right, so and just so that everybody knows we're not cheating, here we go. Here's the butting, right? So you can see it. One, two, three. Whoops, one, two, three. I will get that. One, two, three. We are at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen's enough. Yeah. For the minute. Jeff Benyon. So what was it down before? When uh, you ten. were ten. ten. 
It's now on 15. 15. That's one and a half times the thrutch right. that it had. This is, the Americans do this a lot, you know. Yeah. What are they saying? No, egomaniac, I am not going down the nose. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, I'm not going to try this. <laughs> and somebody, all right, ego maniac, he said, nose hit. You know what the nose hit is, don't you? Yes. Taking it in your mouth and without breathing it in, your blood straight out, you know what yes. yes. Like, oh my God. I want my head examined. You do, definitely. <laughs> that, no, 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 no. Um, it's lovely, Keith, really. It's really yeah, honestly, nice. I love it. It's great. Bloody hell. Oh. Go on, Keith. Jeez, look at that. <laughs> Hang on. Lungs of steel here. Yeah. Lungs of steel. I don't believe no. this. Do it again, Keith. Gary says he broke it. <laughs> I'm worried now. Well, I don't know what all the coughing was about. Oh, it? right. Um, right. Very pleasant. Right. Right. Here we go. What, what are you going to do? We're going to give you the full whop. It's going up full chat. 18 watts. If the coil burns out, I'll replace it. That's definitely 15, isn't it? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's it. 18 watts. The full bifter. Now we'll see. I think I could do a 10 second draw on it, mind. It was hard enough doing it at 15. Oh. <laughs> Blood and sand. That smacks the back of your throat. Absolutely smacks the back of your throat. <laughs> I couldn't even inhale there. Go on, Keith. Good long draw, mate. Such an unwieldy thing. <laughs> you see or not? Lights on. Oh, what was that? Two second draw? Aye. Come on. At least six. One, two, three, three four. four. Ah, five. it's gone. It's not letting them. Nah. Cuts Sack out. Cutting out. It's cutting out. Oh. Oh. oh, never mind. We tried, oh. Jeff. Well, we we uh, tried. We tried. We did our best. Yeah. And on that note, there was a sense of, of menthol in that. There is. Yeah. There is. It's coconut ice. Coconut ice is coconut menthol. Now the menthol, indeed, the menthol wasn't coming through. Was no, it's it? coming through at, uh, at higher there. wattage. Mm. Yeah. Hey, it's there. It's been cracking, yeah. but it's time to go. Chris has just again. said the words, we'll have to An go. An hour again. An hour again. It has been It has been a delight and a pleasure to share the, the last hour with everybody watching and with you on video on demand as well. Tune in on Sunday for Dave's Tattle Box, Monday for Tin Your Tip, Tuesday for Vita Scene, and I'll be back next Wednesday, probably earlier than usual because we'll be starting the debates in the European Parliament. Until then, vape on. Vip at 18 watts, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye, -bye.
six sponsors of the haze hour